In this video, we will learn about sets and groups. So what are the differences? Group can only be created on one dimension and it is fixed, whereas sets can be created across multiple dimensions and it can be fixed or dynamic. So with group, what we get as an output is a label value. And with set, what we get is an in and out value, which is actually a Boolean value. So to understand better, let's start with example here. So here we have a map of the US states. So let's say, for example, we want to group them into um, different regions. So how can we do that? So what we can do is basically just highlight, select the states that we want to group together. And then we can right click here and you see a group option here. So we want to group at this state level. So after doing this, you see that here a group is created with this paper clip sign here, which indicates that this is a group. And then we can edit this group and we can see the groupings that we have made. So here we have grouped a we have a list of states that has been grouped together. We can rename this. Let's call this this will be north, south is west west region right so i believe this grouping is probably not accurate but just for example of grouping i will just group them as west region so let's take for example we want to create another group uh, let's take all this region and let's say we want to group them as something else maybe central and then maybe all of this, let's group them together. And then lastly, this is the remaining group. So here we have four regions of group. And then let's go to our group again here, edit group, and we rename our groupings. So this one will be, let's see, this is orange, let's just call this central. And then let's call this North. Okay, and let's call this South. And we click on OK. So now we see that we have four groups created here. And these groups are group labels that have been created. So if we see this in the table form, we can see that they are now shown as group label values. And these are the states that have been placed in the groups here. So with group, you can see that um, it is fixed. What it meant is that the values in this group will be fixed based on our selection that we have manually created. Okay, now let's move on to the example on sets. So over here, we will cover two examples. One is a fixed set and one is a dynamic set. So let's recap what we have here from our previous video. This is a scatter plot looking at the relationship of the sales and profits of all orders. So what we want to do here is actually to highlight a quadrant of the set. So previously, we have created this reference line so that we can look at the quadrant whereby the sales is um, above a minimum value and the profit is above a minimum value. So how we can improve this visualization is also by highlighting this specific quadrant. So we can do this by using a set. So it will give us a in or out value of this condition. So one way we can do is to do it manually, which is the fixed set. So we can highlight this set that is in this quadrant and right click and create a set okay let's call this minimum sales profit okay so now when we bring in this into colors we can see that there is an in and out value of this condition that uh, we have 
So all this grouped here will be under the in set and the rest will be out of the set. So this works fine if the data is static, our conditions are static, and this is a permanent view. But we will want to have something more dynamic, something that changes with the data that we have or the condition that we input. So here, we are going to make use of the parameters that we have created. So if you are not familiar with what parameter is, you can check out the previous video. So now let's work on creating a dynamic set. Let's remove this and create a set from scratch. So all these points here are created based on the order ID. So we want to create a set on our order IDs. So we can right click on the dimension order IDs and we can go to create a set. So the first set we want to create is probably called the minimum profit set. So we can add a condition here saying that the profit should be at least above $1,000. So here what we have done is that we can manually input our value or otherwise we can actually make use of our parameter that we have created here. So what we want to do is actually go to formula and we say we want the sum of the profit to be more than or equals to the parameter that we have created. And we select OK. So let's go ahead and create one more set for the minimum sales set. So we can go to create and we go to set and we create call this minimum sales set. Okay, let's go to our condition. So we will do the same thing. Let's create a formula called the sum of sales has to be greater or equals to the minimum sales. So now that we have created both this set, what we want to do is actually to create a dynamic version of the manual set that we have created initially. So what we can do is to select both this set, right click here and we create a combined set. So here we are given the option of our join condition. So we want a situation where the members are in both set. So let's select this and then let's call this minimum sales profit dynamic set. Okay, so here previously we have created this prof minimum sales profit set manually and if we put it on the colors here, we can see that these are the highlighted ones here. And it might not actually even be accurate with some of the points that we have, might have missed out. And now let's drag this dynamic set that we created here. We can see that the quadrant that we want to look at is highlighted. And let's take a look at what happens when we change our condition. So let's say we want to change our profit minimum to 500. We see that our reference line shifts and also the colored circles here also changes accordingly to our input. In the next video, we will start putting all that we have learned throughout our basic series video and start learning more about how to build a dashboard view.